This is Baby Spine. Out. Peace. 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 What's going on, everybody? I am your host, Baby Spine. In today, guys, I'm going to be showing you my new build that I just uh, came up with earlier today and it was a lifesteal build i had been requested in the comments to do a lifesteal build with kwong so i figured i'd throw something together uh and give you guys a little blood so here we go we're gonna be starting with the warlord and you can use centurion if you feel like you'd rather have some health or whatever that's fine if you want more health get centurion if you want to benefit your life still build a little bit more you want to go at warlord because then you're going to get better gains back with more damage which is what the whole theme is based around so these first three starting items are going to be crucial because this is going to be the difference in whether you solo lane or jungle basically if there's a jungler on your team you need to solo lane at least that's what i tell other kwongs because two junglers is terrible and i get sick and tired of seeing people that uh, keep picking Kwong even though we have a Rampage or a Chimera and then they select the jungle role and it both people try to jungle and then we lose the game because we don't have anybody uh, playing lanes properly so either way uh, yeah so if you're if your team needs you as a jungler that's what the harvester key is there for and you can just grab harvester key and healer token and head into the jungle and don't really use your abilities just let your healer token and your life steal uh, heal you up as you basic attack things because you're not going to have the mana pot But if you're going to be solo laning, you're going to need this mana potion and healer token So grab this for your first three points if you are going to be doing a solo or duo lane with somebody I happened to solo lane when I played them and it was very fun All right, so our first card here is going to be an assassin's ward guys And this is going to give you 6.5 physical damage 16 physical pin and 2.5 life still as well as allow you to place Shadow Wards in the surrounding area for three minutes and they recharge your base obviously you guys know this either way We're gonna be equipping this with three minor strikes and that is legit all the minor strikes I have so unfortunately I will not be able to upgrade any other cards with any minor strikes um, But uh, but fortunately I actually found a way to uh, Still get a bunch of fully upgraded cards without needing any more minor strikes and I'll show you what we do here So this is definitely going to give you an early game physical damage bonus when you go back with your first six points and fully upgrade your assassin's ward All right, so next the next card you need to get is this wind carver blade right here This is going to give you the uh, 6.5 physical damage and 5.5 attack speed and then also that again once it's fully upgraded and then we will be putting three minor kinetics on this because I do have minor kinetics that I can use and I also definitely like to build a little bit of attack speed after I got a little bit of damage because then that really helps raise your damage per second as you start swinging faster and you become more of a threat. So that'll get your attack speed where it needs to be for the early game. And then your next early game card is going to be a Void Steel Dagger with three minor pierces. Now this Void Steel Dagger, if you don't know, gives you physical damage, physical pin, and more physical damage. This is also going to sync up with your Assassin's Sword that gives you physical pin. And we're going to build these uh, minor pierces because I don't have any minor strikes. And this isn't bad because this will actually get you up to 80 physical pin at this point in the game. And this is like what when you're at about 18 card points. So if somebody put a tempered plate on or something, you're just going to be chopping right through it with your first three uh, fully upgraded six point cards. But we don't we don't hang on. We, we later change that. Let me show you. So when you get your next nine points, you can go back and swap out all those first three cards. You swap the, your first assassin's ward out and basically make it the same thing except two point strikes. So it's a nine point card now and you get a lot more damage out of it. And then this is going to secure your mid game advantage as well. And then, of course, you do the same thing with your wind carver, change it out for two point kinetics instead of minor kinetics. So you get a, a lot more attack speed now. And then um you will also you have this void still right here so what we end up doing is we we end up dropping off those and because i do have two point strikes i just use a two point pierce and two uh two point strikes because this will actually put you at 64 physical pin which is more logical for the early to mid game and then uh but that's not all we actually get pin for the late game as well 
but that's this is how you're gonna you're gonna drop off that one void still with miners and this is what you're gonna turn it into you get your 64 pin and a big boost in damage that you didn't have with your first void still because i didn't have minor strikes or anything like that still not a big deal and the build really works well all right so let's see after you got that and your first three six point cards have been transformed into nine point cards next you're going to want to move on to your 12 point cards or actually we still have one more nine point card i almost forgot and this is what makes the build so awesome this thirst fang right here this is going to be your fourth nine point card and this here is going to give you physical damage life steal and more life steal when it's fully upgraded 10 life steal actually so what's cool about this is that what we're going to do here is we're going to put two strikes on it and a lesser drain and this lesser drain with the thirst fang and your assassin's ward is going to give you a total of 15 percent life steal now that may not seem like a lot but when you consider that kwong gets 15 percent life steal from his gift of the heavens when it's fully upgraded then you have 30 percent life steal and that's actually insane if you have a hard hitting fast swinging damage build <laughs> and not even really have to build that much life still i mean all we built was an assassin's ward and a thirst fang with a lesser drain on it yet kwong gets 30 percent total life still thanks to his passive so that is freaking insane and i really love it as soon as you get this thirst fang on it is on like donkey kong you become like the badass duelist up in there all right so <clears throat> let's see okay so after you got your fourth nine point card the thirst fang on and it's all matched up with your other cards up here your other nine point cards that we all swapped out you're going to be looking really good now and it's time to move on to your 12 point cards naturally the enemy is going to notice that you're a damage build you're a high damage burst build and they're going to be looking to guard against you so at this point i would get my my next void steel dagger on guys and with this because it's going to be a 12 point card we can slot a major pierce on there which will put your penetration up to a total of 128 and we will put two more major strikes i wouldn't worry about going over 128 because then it's actually going to affect the build your damage and everything else 128 is a pretty good spot because you got to think if they're trying to block you you know and they're only trying to block you then they're going to be weak to the other damage energy type damage on your team and they don't want to do that so and not to mention you're going to be cutting you're going to be like halving their armor pieces with 128 pin uh if not taking out the majority of it um either way as long as you have a well-rounded team, you should be good with 128 pin on any build. All right, so either way, with that being said, after you got your damage up there, you got that extra pin uh, from the voids, that 12-point uh, void steel dagger, we're going to move on to your last card, which is a Wind Carver Blade. Now, this Wind Carver Blade is going to have a major kinetic on it and two major strikes. And this is really good because this is going to get your attack speed up to like 70 and that's going to make you badass. The two major strikes are going to make you hit hard as hell. You're going to be swinging fast. You're going to look like a damn dynasty warrior out there. And with 30% life steal, you are going to be getting massive gains back that really allow you to just duel anybody 1v1 or maybe even 1v2 or, you know, it's going to take a team to focus you down because if you get to fight anybody heads up, you're going to win with a build like this with his life steal. All right, so that's what's up. It's a pretty cool build. Um, I actually have... The build right here pulled up on Agora and, or Agora.gg. There will be a link in the description so you can see how to uh, put it together and what it has to offer there on the site. Even though I just went through and told you how to put it together here. Like I said, that's why I'm putting a link in the description in case this video just isn't enough justice for you. You can go check it out over there. So on Agora.gg, it says this build will give you 247 physical damage, 128 physical pin, 15 life steal which keep in mind with an additional 15 percent from gift of the heavens that's actually 30 percent life steal and an additional 71.5 attack speed that's going to stack onto your attack speed that already scales every time you level up so you are going to be insanely badass so the positives to this build is that you are just like a badass assass assassin slash duelist and you know the downsides are that yeah, you're squishy at times. If a team decides to all focus you at once, you're definitely going to be in trouble and you want to try to avoid those encounters, you know. But you can definitely take the majority of people head on with this build and do very, very well with it. You know, it's a great build, very high damage, uh, you know, just give it a try. Let me know how you like it, guys. 
Uh, if you want to see the actual match for that game, I'll upload a separate video, guys, and I'll do a I'll do a commentary review, and we'll talk about how I solo laned and everything like that. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see that, guys. But for now, I'm just keeping it simple. You got the build right here. Go try it out. Let me know how it works. I had a blast with it. I felt like it was demoralizing to the enemy team. It made them want to surrender, I feel like. As you've seen in the intro, they didn't want any part of it. And that was only early to mid game of the deck. I didn't even get the thing to 60 CXP. I'd played a bot game beforehand before doing the PvP match. And my god, I was chopping the shit out of those bots. And I definitely would have seen something along the same lines had they not surrendered. I could have got to 60 CXP and really just unloaded on them, but it's whatever. They surrendered. I'm not hating. It's a good build, and you guys should go try it out. Anyways, I'll catch you guys later. This is Baby Spine. Out. Peace. 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 Peace.